Today's lesson is about to draw a graph that represents the extension of this spring lab. This spring was gradually extended by adding a mass, it starts with 100 grams mass and uh, producing a extension. 100 grams mass corresponds to one Newton force. Then gradually we are adding one more slot, mass slot with 100 grams. So now I have 200 grams, which represents two Newton force. And now I have a different extension. Then I add one more and the spring keep extending as I add more mass. So every time that I add one mass, I record, I measure with a ruler how much the spring is being extended. This is the data table from this lab experiment. One Newton corresponds to this particular extension. So if I'm going to convert all these values to centimeter, that will be 3.5 centimeter. This will be eight centimeters. These will be 12.7 centimeters. These 1.73 centimeters. And these 2.19 centimeters. However, I'm going to plot the graph using the values in meter. First, I'm going to label my y-axis with force in newtons and my x-axis with the extension in centimeter. Please note that the force is my independent variable, is the one that I manipulate and the extension is my dependent variable. However, for this case in particular, I'm going to draw on my y-axis that usually I will have my dependent variable. In this case, I'm going to draw the force which is independent variable and the x-axis, my extension, which is the dependent variable. I'm going to flip the order in this case. Before choosing a scale, use 75% of this graph paper. Draw your y-axis, which is label force, and the x-axis and label extension and the unit on both. In order to use 75% of my line or my y-axis, I am going to do one box and a half for one Newton, one box and a half, two, because they have force here in this case, have equal incre increment. So that will be my three, four, and five. So as you see, I'm using a great portion of my y-axis. For the x-axis, we have to look this range from 0 0.035 to 0 0.2. So a good choice will be here. Make the first one 0 0.05 and this will be 0 0.1. 0 0.15, 0 0.2, and 0 0.25.
So our first number here is 0 0.035. So let me flip this. If this is 0 0.05, the first two little boxes is 0 0.01, then we have 0 0.02, this is right here 0 0.03, this is 0 0.04, and this is 0 0.05. So every two tiny boxes, my smallest increment is 0 0.01. So now that I am happy with my scale, I'm going to record here that my y-axis, I'm using 1.5 large box and make it one Newton and for the x-axis I'm using two tiny boxes as 0 0.01 meter just as a reference so my next step is plotting all points, this. So my 0 0.035 should be right here between those two. So I'm gonna bring this up and that will be my first intersection. My second one is 0 0.08. So 0 0.05 is here, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.08, and this is 0 0.08, right here. Now I'm going to connect, connect 0 0.08 with two. right here my next number is 0 0.127 so this is 0 .0, 0 0.1 so those two here will be 0 0.011 this is 0 0.12 and i'm looking for 0 0.127 so it'll be very close to uh, 0 0.13 so there will be close to this but not there so I'll mark this one so that will be my next intersection my next number is 0 0.173 so 0 0.15 here will be 0 0.16 this is 0 0.17 so you'll be right a little bit after 0 0.173 so you'll be right here and that will correspond with 4 so that will be my next cross next is 0 0.219 so this is 0 0.21, 1, and this will be 2, so 1, 9 will be almost 2, so that is what I'm looking for. Then I connect with my last one, which is 5. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points plot on this graph. And I'm going to use my ruler and draw a line of best fit. Next, I'm going to give this graph a name. I'm going to label. This is the extension of a spring.
our last step is to find the gradient or the slope. So the formula for the slope is rise over the run. To do this, we need to find a big triangle on the graph. So I'm going to select two points that I know um, what values they have. For example, this one here, I know my Y and I know my X. And this one right here, same, I know my Y and I know my X. Then you trace a horizontal line and you trace a vertical line. That intercepts with this one. So now we have this is the run because you run this way. And this is the rise because you go upward. Now I have those points for Y, I have this, for X, I have this. This is Y and this is X. In terms of Y, I'm going to subtract 5 minus 1. So that's the rise, 5 minus 1. Twice, 5 minus 1. I want to make a correction in this video. I Previously, I have two numbers here and two numbers here. They were not correct. Um, what I want to do is concentrate only on what we have here for rise that corresponds to the y-axis, so 5 minus 1. And the same thing with the x-axis you be this value right here, which is 0 0.219, that is not showing, minus um, 0 0.035, which is this. So now I have done my substitution with the y and with the x. Now I'm going to subtract this, that will be 4, and this one is... Zero point two one nine minus zero point zero three five. So I have zero point one eight four. Now I'm going to divide four. Four divided by zero point one eight four. I have twenty one point seventy three nine. I'm going to round it to seventy four here. So this is 21.74 and the units is Newton per meter. The gradient of a force over extension of a spring gives us the spring constant. So what is this? So the spring constant determines how stretch is a spring. So I have this one that usually you can find in physics lab. Uh, also I have this one here that you can use for different applications. Um, I have this one here that is very difficult to stretch. So all those three springs they have different different spring constant and that's how in the industry we purchase uh, different types of springs.